Howdy, this here's Paul again, and we picked and have some other little Sunday school lesson this morning. Uh, this morning's lesson is called A Mission from Birth. And the text is out of Luke 2, 25 through 35, and then it jumps over to John 12, 23 through 26. So it ain't too many verses, but I'm going to pray, and I'm going to read the text and then I'm going to try to get into the lesson. But let me give you these related scriptures before I forget. Luke 21 through 24, and then it goes to 36 through 40. So, you know, anywhere in there, you, you get the gist of stuff. Matthew 26, 18 through 45, and then Mark 14, 32 through 42. Now, all this stuff is because scripture proves scripture. And uh, you'll get a better handle on on what we're studying if you go and read these uh, these related scriptures uh, that they have here. So I'm gonna pray and read the text, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna try to expound on it a little bit this morning. So starting, uh, let's pray first. Lord God, we thank you for salvation. Lord, we thank you that you are who you say you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you have saved us. And, Lord God, we just pray that we uh, we prove to be good subjects, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that uh, we you would lead and guide us. And, Lord God, that we would, uh, we, we would just be what you intend for us to be. And, Lord God, I pray for all the sick and afflicted. Lord God, out there, we pray healing to come on them, Lord. We pray they be healed from the crown of the head, from the soles of the feet. And, Lord God, we call for more souls to the kingdom. Lord God, we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, uh, starting out in Luke 2, verse 25, says, and, hold, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought the, in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us now <clears throat> let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared, uh, prepared before the face of all people, a light to the Gentiles. Excuse me, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And then it starts in John 12, 23. It says, And Jesus answered him, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in the, this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me where I am. There shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So right now, this two, uh, two scriptures here is talking about both ends of Jesus' earthly life. Uh, being born and taken to the temple at the time he was supposed to, and then right here at the end where he's talking about his death. So let me get down here to my notes, and we're going to try to try to talk about it a little. Uh, come on here. Yeah, here we go. 
You know, we've all have uh, prayed and waited a long time for prayer to be answered, only to think that God will never hear you. Well, he heard you. But sometimes God requires us to wait on him patiently. But this does not mean that he has ignored you or refused you. It simply means that he is working to strengthen your faith and love for him. And he wants us to seek him for himself and love, not just treat him like a genie in a bottle that appears whenever you rub the lamp. Uh, we can rest assured that God does what he has promised. He does not lie, nor does he fail. And, it, and that's uh, Numbers 23, 19, and then Titus 1 and 2, and Hebrews 6, 18. So they just keep selling it over and over. Uh, See, we'll find our prayer lives a whole lot more fulfilling if we seek to align ourselves with God's will rather than trying to talk God into lining up things with, with our will. I know I've done that myself. I've been guilty in, of, of bargaining with God. If you'll do this, I'll do that. But that ain't the way God works. God works in his own time. But when the answer comes, we realize that he goes beyond our wildest imagination and exceeds our expectations. In Ephesians 3.20, it says, He will give you exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. And I'm paraphrasing. But you can't even think of what you could get if you just follow God. Now, in this lesson, we aim to learn of the patient trust of Simeon and how Christ's followers must die to self as he died on the cross, and we aim to grow closer to the Lord as we learn to patiently wait on him, and, and we aim to learn to desire to know God as our sufficiency rather than just get our prayers answered. Uh, like I said, the genie in the bottle. Now in this late week's excuse me, tongue tie. In this week's lesson, we to meet, meet a man who learned how to wait patiently on God, and this man was named Simeon, and he was known as a righteous and devout man who deliver, uh, who believed that God was going to send His anointed one to Israel, and he was so close to the Lord that God made a tremendous promise to him that may have seemed too good to be true. However. Simeon believed God, and his faith was rewarded in the end, just like our faith will be rewarded in the end. Now, 40 days after Jesus' birth, Mary and Jesus brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. They're going to dedicate him. In accordance with the law's provisions for those unable to afford a lamb, they brought two turtle doves for a sacrifice. In Jerusalem at the time of Jesus' birth was a man named Simeon who was just and righteous and a devout follower of the Lord. This is only mention of this man by name in the Bible, and we don't know nothing else about him. Luke don't tell us his age or his vocation because them was unimportant details. What mattered was that this man was faithfully devoted to God. Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel, or the comfort of Israel, which meant that he was waiting for God to rescue and deliver his people. He greatly anticipated the coming of the Messiah because he believed God would send his anointed one to save Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon Simeon, and he revealed to him that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Christ or Messiah. He walked so closely with the Lord that God promised him that he would not die until he laid eyes on the one through whom the consolation to Israel would come. Simeon was led by the Spirit into the temple and saw Mary and Joseph there with the baby Jesus. They had brought him into the temple to offer the sacrifices that we talked about there a minute ago. 
And when Simon saw, excuse me, Simeon saw the child, he recognized him and knew that his prayers had been answered. He didn't know Joseph and Mary from Adam, but he knew who Jesus was. He knew him as a child. He had seen him evidently. If it was even in a dream, it don't say. We can't speculate. But he knew him. It says he knew him. He recognized him. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and thanked God for answering him. He declared that he could depart or die in peace now that he'd seen Israel's Messiah. We don't know how long Simeon had been waiting after hearing God's promise, but God kept his word to his faithful servant and allowed him to see the very one who would save Israel. Simeon proclaimed that Jesus was not only sent for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. Jesus became a light to the Gentiles and glory to the Jews. There is a universal dimension to the mission of Christ. Now that don't mean that everybody will be saved in the end. That's universalism. Salvation comes only through Jesus Christ, but all can be saved through faith in him. Now, hearing all this, you know, Mary and Joseph, although they was well advised by God and uh, the angel at who, uh, who Jesus was, they still marveled. They was a taken aback. Simeon further told Mary that many in Israel would fall and rise because of Jesus. Some would reject him. And others would follow. Those who um, humbly accepted him will be raised. And those who proudly reject him will fall. And as for Mary, he said, your heart will be pierced when you see your son die. He didn't tell her that, but he did tell her that her soul would be, she would be pierced to her soul. Now, as Christmas times are coming, uh, we celebrate the birth of, of Jesus. We don't celebrate a day. We just celebrate the, the birth of Jesus. We don't care what day it was. We're celebrating the fact that Jesus was born because he was born to save us. Jesus didn't bring peace. He is peace. And we need to remember that there's a cost associated with following him. We must be willing to come and die to our own selves and our own agenda. And we have to do it daily, Paul said. Such daily sacrifice is a small reflection of the cross that Jesus himself bore. For him, death was his past path to glorification and unless he died he would never have been able to bear fruit but as it is he's able to save all those who put their trust in him now maybe you are the recipient of gifts from various people right now you need to enjoy those gifts as reminders of God's grace but remember that the greatest gift is knowing Christ and being known by him. Those who serve Christ must follow him, which means we must always put him first in our lives. Jesus is our greatest gift. And nothing in this world or the next is going to compare to him. Oh, we'll have a big time up there, but he is, he's our prize. Now, Simeon was a man who knew what it meant to wait on the Lord, and we got to learn to wait on the Lord. God had revealed to him that he would see the Messiah, and he rejoiced when the day come. He followed and served God, and God honored his obedience and devotion. Remember way back there in the Old Testament, obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, I want to ask you today, what are you waiting on? 
Are you being patient or do you find yourself fidgeting with impatience? Impatience, excuse me. You know, I can remember being in a nervous jerk for Christmas to get here so I could get them toys. And now, I'm not in no nervous jerk, but I'm waiting on the Lord to call us home. It's what I've waited for all my life. Rest assured, God will do what he has promised and will not let you down. See, being a Gentile, you know, if God hadn't told Abraham that he would be a father of nations, if he had just said, you're going to be the father of the Jews, then we might have not even got in. But because of what God said, God has honored that. He always has and he always will. Just like we went them three verses about uh, God cannot lie. He is not a man that he could lie. We have to learn to be content with knowing Christ and accepting him as your greatest gift. Now if you're listening to this today for whatever reason, and you ain't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, find somebody to lead you that way. All you got to do is tell Lord, you know, pray right now and say, God, I am a sinner, and I want to change my life, and I want you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life, and I want to submit to you wholly in Jesus' name. If you say that prayer, you consider yourself saved. Find you a good church, a good Bible teaching church. Because the only thing we're waiting on is for the last sinner to get saved. And then we get to go home. All right, we love you. I'm going to pray you out of here. Lord God, we thank you for this lesson. Lord God, I hope it touched somebody today. I hope somebody uh, heeded my word, Lord, and I hope Lord, that uh, they get saved right now, Lord, and they, uh, they're welcome into the fold. And Lord God, we just pray for more souls to come, from the, come to the kingdom, Lord, and we pray for the sick and afflicted, Lord, because we know that you are the great physician. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen, amen, and amen.